Now there's no keyframes to set on the surface itself. We only keyframe the track adjustments. So if I just set our points here that are going to act as our acts our frame here. This is also useful for when the surface itself goes out of screen. Uh, and I'm going to set a um, a master all on that. So I've set a master keyframe on these here. I'm going to come along here. Shift my adjustments here just so that it matches up properly with uh, with where I want it to be. So I've just made a couple of very, very minor adjustments there. And now that's got our surface looking exactly as we want it. And we can even come up here and, and look at our insert clip and insert the, uh, the logo there. So now we can see that that's actually tracking perfectly. And again, if we hit stabilize, we can just check that is actually working working how we need it to. So we've got our track, we've done our road scoping, and we've got the data we need for the corner pinning. So, so the next stage is to get this information out into our compositing software. So let's turn our yellow roto back on. Actually go to, uh, to render here. And what I want to do is I want to render the color and the mat of the yellow, yellow roto. And I could export out just the mat itself. I wanted to use that information just as a track mat so I was still working on the original original clip without having to re-render anything. In this case it doesn't matter too much so uh, I'm just going to render this out as a quick time movie. To the animation codec, millions of colors plus without any keyframes. So I've got my matted layer out there now so I just need to export out the uh, the tracking data. So we come down here to export data and export tracking data I can um, choose a format that my compositor will, will understand. In this case, I'm just going to use a uh, After Effects corner pin data. And I can either copy it to the clipboard and then paste it directly into After Effects or save it as a text file, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to call this yellow corner pin. And I'm also going to export out just the transform data as well. So that's the transform data from my, from my track there and save that out as actually just yellow track that will do so now let's take that into after effects so here's our, our background here lovely so let's just import that, that footage so we've got a yellow roto movie here come with a straight alpha channel and let's bring in our pack okay so let's just create a uh, composition with that in there we go. Okay, and let's bring our cinnamon pack in here. You can see that's a little bit bigger than uh, the full screen. Let's just open up the, the text documents with this in here. If you ever find the data you've exported from Mocha isn't working as you expect in After Effects, just open up your, your little text file here and just check that this is all set up accurately because that's, that's probably going to be the, the problem. If you're working with interlaced footage, you could have your units per second being 50 instead of 25. Just set that to 25 and then, uh, then you're good to go. So I'm just going to select all, copy, just copy that into the clipboard. So now I just paste that data in there and our pack disappears. Well, it, it hasn't actually disappeared, it's just disappeared off screen. So I'm just going to have to, uh, to bring, it on, bring it on over and match that in there. There we go, very, very rough and ready. But if we have a look, you can see that the, uh, the corner pin effect has actually matched on to our, our pack exactly. So what I'm going to do, cheat a little bit just to get these matching. There we go, lovely. Well, now we've got two, two problems still. Uh, one is that the, the pack is still very, still very jittery. And the other one is that the pack is also very, very small. So the jittery motion is very easy to, to counterbalance. Now this is our, our um, transform data that we exported out. I'm just going to copy this in and I'm going to use this to, to, um, to stabilize the, the picture. So all I've done is copy and pasted those keyframes in. And you can see it's pasted in anchor points, position, scale and rotation. Now if all we're after is stabilizing the image, we don't want any of these other ones here. We only want anchor points. So I can just come in here, just delete all of this, and just reset our values there. 
And as I do that, I've reset the value so that it's, it's positioned in the center itself. But if we have a look, it's positioned in the center, almost perfectly smooth there. So let's turn our, um, our pack back on here and let's just, uh, just move that over so it matches that in a bit better. There we go, very nice. Now, because I want to keep the movement consistent between the two layers, I'm just going to parent the new pack to the old pack there. So if I stabilize this up here, the new label is going to fit exactly on the pack here. So I can even come up to my pack and just scale it up to 200. And that matches pretty well. So now if I place this on the background layer itself, so I just come in here, just put my yellow roto footage on the background layer. It's worked out pretty well here. And just add another couple of quick effects and do the same thing with the shadow. Now without using Mocha, this would have been a very challenging project to pull off because we had to stabilize and rotoscope the image and create a, uh, a corner pin track. But all of that, comes down to just our original track that we did at the beginning of this tutorial using about 10 points to draw a quick rough mask around our image and hitting the track button here and that rock solid track that Mocha gave us really was the foundation upon which we built all of those other effects so I hope that's given you an idea of what we can do with the tracking and rotoscoping tools in Mocha and how we can then transfer that data over into a compositor like After Effects thanks for listening